is Kim Brintz. I'm managing editor of TV Line and uh, X File from way back, and I'm excited to talk to some of the men that are integral to the making of this show today. Um, I'm, they're just going to come on up. I'm going to introduce them as they come and give them a big round of applause. All right. So first off, we have Mr. Jerry Harden, who played. D <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, we speculated to get a great deal about who he was or why he was. Uh, and uh, it, the speculation began with what relationship he had. Was uh, he uh, um, a relative of Muller's? Was he uh, 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 an absolute partner to the government, which he appeared to be. Uh, so uh, I took a pick. I decided that I was a partner to the government and uh, played it that way uh, as much as I could. And uh, it was turned out to be a great trip for me. Um, because I was working a good deal in those days and I would fly in, do two scenes with Mulder and fly out to somewhere. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was easy to let it happen in that way. Um, but it was interesting that that choice made me uh, recognizable all over the world, uh, apparently. After that, uh, that first season, I was traveling in Europe, and uh, my first experience was I was in uh, Russia, and two or three people stopped me and said, you're an x files aren't you? <laughs> and I said, I, I don't speak Russian. <laughs> Yes, I was an x files <laughs> That's the other deep throat. <laughs> Most of you are too young to know who the first is. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, <laughs> Steve, I, I heard, you can tell me if this is right or wrong, that uh, Chris Carter wrote the character of Dwayne Barry with you in mind. Is that correct as far as you know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah? yeah. Uh, okay, so follow up. He thought, I want to write this character, and I have the perfect guy for him. What do you think about you made him think that you were the right person for it? I don't know, but I, I was editing a film that I directed, and I was in the middle of editing. And I, I had not read the screenplay, so I, I, I was just thinking about editing this film. Uh, and then he called me in the editing and he said to me, he said, uh, I, why did you turn it down? I said, I, 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 I put in the middle of editing or whatever. And he said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do if you don't want to do it. Because, and I, I wrote it with you in mind. And I said, you know, I'll be on the next flight. <laughs> Larry, I'm wondering, um, how exactly does one get cast multiple times on a hit show, not just once? They kept, just kept bringing you back. Talk to me a little bit about how that happened. Sorry, how did what happen? How did you get multiple hits at uh, multiple times on a hit show? Oh, oh, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, I started off, uh, my very first one was in the, the second season. It was De Handy for Let's. Uh, that wasn't... Uh, a, a big part, but there are no small parts. <laughs> I'd like to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> no small parts. Uh, but anyway, after I did that, they were they said they were interested in me doing something else on the show. And, and uh, then this Detective Manners character came along and, and uh, I went in to read for that and they said, no, don't don't say the swear words. Say bleep. <laughs> say blank. I, I said, Aren't they just gonna leap over the last thing? They said, no, we want you to say those those words. <laughs> okay. I uh, wasn't sure about that, but you know, it became this character that uh, that people liked. And, uh, I mean, I'm just so glad that, uh, that they had that idea. I, I hated the plan. 
and at first I ended up loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've always played like cops or people who had a certain authoritative air about them, and I have to say you have a very lovely, chill air about you. Why? What do you think the casting director was like? No, this guy can. This guy can really bring the detective. Well, I'm not chill at all. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I know, I, I played three different uh, law officers. But you know, the other guy I played was kind of a rebel. He was kind of like these people that are causing trouble nowadays. Yeah. So I don't like to relate to them. <laughs> I like to relate more to what that meant at the time, which was kind of a anti-Vietnam protest. A whole different idea. But, but even even the, the different policemen, they were they were all different. They were different types of guys, and I liked each character for that different reason. And what it is about me that, that uh, gives me an air of authority, I have no idea because I have no, <laughs> I have no authority. I just do what people tell me to do. <laughs> Jerry, you you started with the show very early, and obviously at that point in season one, it was not the phenomenon that it would become. Do you remember, like when you first saw the script, were you, was it just another job? You said you were working a lot at that point. Was there anything that kind of stood out to you about the script you saw? Um, about your first script, the first instance with the show? Um, no, I really didn't know uh, how long it was going to go on. <laughs> I was hired to do a show, but then they hired me to do another show, <laughs> and then another, and then I became a regular appearance, and that's when all the speculation began. Who, who was he and what relationship did he have? And I found that rather fascinating. And the writing that I had in that first season was terrific. The writer was dead on to that character. And he, he, for some reason, left the show at the, the end of the season. I never knew why, but I didn't think that writing was as good. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I wasn't there to do it, so it didn't matter. <laughs> and then Stephen, as you pointed out, X replaced Deep Throat as Mulder and Foreman. And um, I'm wondering, you had. You had some very physical scenes in that role. I mean, you're hoisting Mulder over your shoulder, and throwing down the scanner. So this is being the question. I just want to know anything. Like, were you were you carrying the Duke Huffy over your shoulder? Like, were you like, just talking to him? Anything. I just want to know all about it. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm using this cane. <laughs>
tell you know the girls, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Steve, how about for you? Um, I was watching the episode the other day. I was rewatching, and um, I'm wondering what the direction was like when they're like, okay, there's going to be a laser that shoots into your mouth. Like, <laughs> go. Like, oh, what, is that? what is that? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, it's actually a serious question. Like, how? What was the director saying to you? How were you channeling what might be happening? Did you know what it was going to look like when it was all done? No, but I remember the scene very well because it was, it had still a lot of anger. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it was, it was, it just got me in the character. Yeah, I mean, he, Specialties too, you know, and being again individuals, 
We're bringing our individual self to those writer's words. And that's, that, that gives us all different performances. Yes. I mean, we would all play Elvis differently. Especially. <laughs> I always want to know, like, what's it like on the set? What's the mood like on the set? What was the working environment like on the set when you were there? Was it, was it, did people hang out during breaks? Did people kind of go to their own places and, and stay in the character? What was your experience being in the work environment at the X-Files? Any of you can jump in. You're next. What's your turn? Uh, am I next? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I have no question. Uh, but uh, the the guard on the way and and also uh, the censor, uh, David and I had such a uh, like we were on stage.
You know, I, I have to say something about the crew because it was, it was such a delight to work on that show because it's a crew. God bless you. Fantastic people, all of them. Uh, it was. It was a treat to be on the set. Sometimes you were on the set too long, and it was raining, and it was two o'clock in the morning, and you just wish you could go the hell home. But they said, are you ready for your next scene? I go, what? <laughs> Which one is that? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. God, where the hell is my script? But, no, but it was, for the most part, it was really a delight to be on that set. And I've been on quite a few sets, since you're all of you. Yeah, we're not good with working. We're making, we, damn, we're working. Yeah. We, we are yeah. working here to have a job. Exactly. It was an absolute joy. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's right for you, too. Yeah. This is a joy for me. Because you work on the show, and for all those years, I never met any of these guys. That's it. No. no. We never no. met any of I didn't say any of you. So this is an absolute joy for me. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? All my work was with Mulder. And uh, I, I flew in. <coughs> I met Mulder. We did see. Uh, it usually was two or three days. And I left. <laughs> that happened. I never met Jimmy until my death. <laughs> She and I were sitting in the car on a very early morning, freezing to death. And I met her and actually we exchanged conversation. Uh, and then she witnessed my death. The classic tale. I have one more question. It's going to be for Jerry and then I'm going to come out to you guys to so get ready, okay? Um, so, thoughts on Deep Throat's real name when we finally learned it during the revival? I'm Did you have any thoughts on Deep Throat's real name when we finally learned it during the revival? Um. Who knows what it was? Shout it out. Ronald Hackula. Ronald Hackula. I have nothing to give you, but you're right. <laughs> So we found out that Deep Throat's real name was Ronald Pacula during the revival. You're being destroyed. Oh, I'm so sorry. Deep Throat's real name was Ronald Pacula. We learned that during the revival. And did you have any thoughts about that? Did you know about that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the time I mean Can someone help me with the episode? I want to say it's... No, I should think we know stuff, no. <laughs> You know what? We're just going to drop this because it's not that important. I would like to come out to you guys in, in the audience, okay? So, raise a hand, I'll come around. knowing stuff, I was wondering, and anyone can correct me if I'm wrong here, I think your character was written into one of the recent like X-Files like books about how Mulder grew up, and I was wondering if you knew about that and how you felt about it. Like you were written into Mulder's like teenage backstory, I think. So, yeah, an age of the chaos. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> Again, that those mics will start for me. Was she was saying that your character was written into a recent book about Mulder's upbringing. My character was? And if you knew about that, which it seems like it would be, I don't. And, uh, Somebody owes me some money. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> 
does it educate it? Yeah. <laughs> My question is also for Larry. Um, you reminded me about that scene. You ate a lot of lobster. A, was it real lobster? And B, was that a very good day or a very bad day? <laughs> okay, they had a whole bunch of lobsters there, so we could do that scene. One of them looked like it came from a Jules Verne story. It was a <laughs> massive thing. So, I think we insisted on keeping that one because it was bigger than all the others, right? And, and it became the character of that scene. <laughs> I was taking cues from the lobster. <laughs> Is it okay to pull you now? <laughs> Can I grab that claw? Okay, I won't. I won't touch that side. No, it, it, that was a good day and a bad day because we had to do so many takes of that dinner scene. It, do you know anything about dinner scenes on film? Yeah, they're a pain in the ass. Okay. <laughs> really, because everything has to match the previous shot, the part of the shot, right, you know, and my, oh, so I didn't like that too much. Like, can we just take that again? Really? <laughs> Whereas most of the time I, I'm ready to say, yeah, I want to do that again. Most actors are never really happy with how they did something. Oh, sure, I'll do it again. I'll do it better this time. But that scene, please let it be over. <laughs> so good and bad for that reason. And I was wondering if you're drawn to more like horror, sci-fi stuff, or you have any interest in horror, or it's just a job that you got. <laughs> it stuck me usually. Yeah, who, who was that for? That was for Steven. Steven? Wait. Okay, what was it again now? Without the mic? Without the mic. I was just asking because I knew you were in like a Jason Goes to Hell. Tell her without the mic. <laughs> she said you were in Jason Goes to Hell. Oh, Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm kind of struggling how to word this question. Um, 
but in the span of your lives and careers, this show was a pretty small period of time, relatively speaking. Um, you've done a lot of other things, and yet you're getting fan mail, coming to these conventions, um, being recognized, and I'm wondering how that, I was just kind of wondered how that feels, like is it, you know, what do you think about it? Is it weird, um, surreal? Um, so how do you contextualize the fact that this, like one thing you did has such outside influence and, you know, an effect on so many people? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, about, it's about the show. Here, let me. 21 Jump Street, Blues Brothers, uh, uh, Pooley High, uh, X Files, Supernatural. I have been so lucky, I think this is what you're addressing, to be a part of re a recurring character in all of these quote unquote iconic shows. You know, and I think, these, I think that's what you're addressing. Like it's, it's a short period of time for a lot of these shows, but a lot of these shows became so damn popular to just have done a couple of guest star roles in it. It you know, makes us well known or, you know, with a little fame and, uh, and a lot of joy. A lot of joy, I think. So I, I feel very blessed uh, to have spent that short time in each one of those shows. And that's how I feel about that. And can I address that uh, myself? <clears throat> Sometimes your best acting was not in the most popular show. So you're known for something that you, you're you happy with, but gee, I wish they would have seen me in that, because that's where I really poured my guts on the stage or, and really came up with something, and they had and only nine people saw it. You know? <laughs> So that's a whole different thing to consider. And it still comes down to we're grateful that we're in this very popular show. <laughs> because it did. It did. It was rewarding. It puts us here. Yes. Yeah. You know? Everything about life. It's always incredible to remember that everything you do affects everything else in the universe. It's a domino effect. We are affecting the rest of the world simply by being here, right now. We're not out there in the street interacting with something that could have caused something else. So remember that everything you do affects everything else in the universe. The domino effect. Big round of applause, please. Can I just say, we're also so grateful for all of you people here. If you people didn't come to these things, these things wouldn't exist. So thank you guys. Our very genial host. Here.